Hey and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. This is part one in the Star Wars style hyperspeed jump effect, or hyperspace jump effect, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this tutorial was a suggestion from Dark Oracle Central, so thanks to you for suggesting this. Um, it seems like a fun effect to do. Um, so yeah, let's align the camera by pressing numpad 1, then control alt numpad 0. So it should already be centered, if it's not just grab it and move it into the center. Okay, so this part one we're going to be creating a particle system, so shift A add a plane. And we can scale this up a bit. And also re uh, rotate 90 degrees on the X. Let's split this window and then press 0 so we can see the camera view. And let's just scale it up so it fills the camera. And just move it over a little bit if it's not centered. Okay, so tab into edit mode and we're going to be adding some, if we press W, we're going to be adding some subdivisions. But what we want to do is press T first to bring up the toolbar, then press W and subdivide. So now we can increase the amount of cuts we need. So let's say about 7 should be, should be enough. Let's just move this window. Okay, so I want to turn this square into a circle. So let's select the face select mode and select all these faces here. And we're going to need an add-on um, for this to work, which it comes as standard with Blender. You just need to switch it on. So go to user preferences, then add-ons. And if we type loop in the search box here, and you just want to activate uh, mesh loop, to, uh, loop tools. It's a very, very useful um, add-on to have. So I always have it on a standard, but you don't have to. So anyway, now we've got this in the tools section. If we go down to the bottom, we've now got loop tools. So we just drop that down. We can see all these tools that we've got. And what we need is circle, and this works as standard, so we don't really, really need to tweak anything. I just want to add another circle here, just in case we need it later on. So it's better to uh, put it in now, rather than later. Okay, so now we've got that shape, we're going to be adding some particles to it. So if we just drag this window back over, so we can see the uh, camera view again. Okay, so in the properties over here, we need to change it to the um, particle system, then add a new particle system. And then let's uh, name this stars one, because we're going to be having a few particles systems, so it's good to name them. Keep it as emitter, and we want, um, to, we want to change a few of these settings now. So if we press sh uh, Alt-A, we can preview the particles and how they're going to interact with the scene. Let's jump back to the, um, the beginning and change some of these settings. So the start frame is fine. The end, we want to change that to 1, because we want them to, to appear at once. Um... Okay, so now we want to change the, if we come here to the Scenes tab, uh, down here to Gravity, we want to turn Gravity off. Um, jump back to the beginning, press Alt-A, we'll see how it looks now. Okay, so they stop around like 50 frames, so we need to increase that. So up here at the top, let's just increase the lifetime to say 200. And... The next thing we need to do, it's being pushed forward. We don't want it to move at all. So let's fix that back in the let's go down here to under velocity. If we reduce the normal to zero, they won't move at all. If we increase it to say 10 or even more, it will be pushed out at a much further rate. But we don't want them to be moving at all. So let's just keep it at that. Okay, so if we press render now, all we're going to see is this white circle, which is, we don't want. If we jump back to the uh, particle tab. And down here under render, we just want to remove the emitter. So we now actually we won't see the circle at all. Now we want to add um, an icosphere, so shift A. And these are going to act as our stars. So shift A, add an icosphere. And what we can do is just drag it out of the way so the camera doesn't see it. And let's just give it a material. Let's call this light. And we can change the surface from diffuse, and we want to change it to an emission. And also increase the strength to say 2. Okay, so now we want this particle system to uh, use them, uh, the aquasphere as, as yeah, particles. So change it back to the particle system. And under render, we want to choose from change it from halo to object. So let's just choose the aquasphere. Okay, so we can see now the icosphere is appearing on the uh, the circle, which is what we need. Let's just change the world settings, the world color to black. And then let's give that a render, see how it looks. So we've got a very basic star field. They're all exactly the same size, so we can change that. And also we want some more of them as well. 
So let's go down under size here, under the render settings, we want to increase the random size, because the overall size is fine, we just want to choose the, uh, the random size. So now if we press number 2 on the keyboard, we can change the render slots, this is useful if you want to compare renders, so I'm just going to render this, and then press number 1 to compare it against the original. So yeah, it's much better now that we've got some random size. Okay, so now we want to add some uh, wind to the scene, since we want to actually push the stars. So if we hide the icosphere, oh, if we unhide it, since uh, that gets rid of them. So if we press M just to move this out of view, so it's not going to get in the way. Okay, let's just move this as well. Just move this a little bit closer. Okay, so let's just shift A and we're going to add in a force field and we're going to add a wind because we want these to be pushed, these um, particles to be pushed at a certain time. So if we zoom in here, we can see these rings. This indicates how strong it is and this arrow indicates which way the wind's going to be blowing. So we want it to push away from the camera. So we just press R to rotate, then X, then 90 degrees. And now we see that it's facing the camera. So we just want to press R, X, 180. So now it's facing away. So we press Alt A to see this. We can see that it's pushing the particles from the beginning, which is what we don't want. So we come here to the uh, the physics panel, and then under strength, we just want to reduce that to zero for now. Because what we want is uh, we want it to start after say a second. So we come to the render settings. We can set that now. I want to use 25 frames as the uh, the standard. You can use whatever you want. After one second, I want this wind to then begin. So go back to the physics tab and then press I while hovered over strength and we'll insert a keyframe. And then let's say we jump some frames ahead. Um, in fact, let's say we jump to say frame 20, 75 and then we increase the strength to well over 30,000. Press I to in, uh, insert a keyframe. Now we see the, uh, yeah, they're going to be pushed after one second in, which is what we want. Good stuff. Now, so if we render this now, we'll see it's not moving at all. Then when we get to about here, they're going to be moved. It's hard to see since there's no frame of reference to see that they've moved. Okay, so now that's working fine. We just want to duplicate this. So select the plane and shift D. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. Now these planes are using the exact same particle system, which is we don't want. We can leave this one as the main one. And then this part, this plane here, we want to uh, press this number 3 to make it a single user and rename it. Say stars 2. And we also want to change the seed value um, so it has a different starting point from the other one. So let's just do the same for this one here. You might not be able to see it. So the more we increase the seed value, the, the different starting position these icospheres are going to be. We'll do the same thing for this one. Make it a single user, rename it. So yeah, when we change the uh, the seed, everything's going to look a little bit different, which is exactly what we want. You can increase the uh, the amount of them, if, uh, the amount of icospheres if you want, the amount of stars that you want. I think that should be work for us for now. Let's just save it and press Alt A and preview it. Let's just render this. Okay, so that should be enough stars for now. Uh, we can always add more later on if we need to. Let's jump back to the first frame, and if we come down here to um, motion blur, this is the uh, first part of the effect. We want to motion blur the stars, and then we're going to be using the um, the nodes later on to finish the effect off. So, once we've increased the, uh, the motion blur, now we'll render it. Now it's moving. We can see that it's got some motion blur applied to it. It's not much, but it's just it's enough that we need. You can always increase it to be a lot more blurred, um, but for now I think that looks fine for us. I'm just going to press Shift A and I'm going to want to add in um, another force field, but this time I want it to be magnetic. I want the stars to sort of be pulled into the middle um, as they move out. So if we add this in now and see how it looks. Okay, it's not really acting the way I want it to, so let's jump back to the first frame. Select the, um, the magnetic field and press R to rotate on the X, 90 degrees. Let's see how it looks now. 
Okay, it's a little bit different. Let's just keep rotating it. Let's try it again. In fact, let's rotate it twice. And there we go. Now it starts to bunch in the middle. Actually, it's too extreme. It looks more like a, a spell or a, I don't know, some sort of plasma ball or something. Let's reduce this down to, say, zero uh, to 0 0.1. The strength to 0 0.1. Well, let's try this now. See how this looks. Okay, so it's, it is bunching in the middle, but not enough. We can come back later on and change that. So we jump to camera view and then press uh, Z. Jump into wireframe view. We can see them, but then they start to fade out. And that's down to the um, the size of the scene. Like right now, if we zoom in, uh, we select the camera and we can see that the grid floor is tiny. So select the camera and then come to the camera properties. And we want to increase the clipping to say six or 700 should be fine. If we render it we should be able to see it. Okay so I want it to bunch more in the middle but we can come back and do that later on. Um, anything else we need to change here? You can change the um, the type for the shutter. Increase it here to 0.7 and give that a render. It's pretty hard to see while they're all the way out there so I'll probably just render a new frame just say around here. See how that looks. So there's more motion blur on the stars. Okay, so now we've got some more motion blur on it, we can take it into the node editor. And make sure your use nodes and backdrop is selected. Don't worry about this node here. If you've followed the previous tutorial, you already know what that is. If not, um, there's a link in the description. So let's just tidy these up. Let's align all the camera. Okay, we're going to shift A. I'm going to come down to uh, distort and we want to add a lens distortion. Just plug this in. And this is a very cool node. Um, if we increase this dispersion here, if you look around the edges of the, the image, it becomes like, like the motion blur we just did. But it also adds uh, some color to it as well, which we don't want. So we'll change that later on. Uh, what we need to do is animate the, uh, the dispersion rate because um, the more we increase this, the more the dispersed is going to look. It's pretty. It's not the easiest to explain, but I can show you in a minute. Okay, so we just set this back to zero because what we need to do is animate the dispersion. Um, if we jump to around here, so the particles have already started to move, but they're not moving that much. So the motion blur, if we see, it's very very small. Uh, it's hardly visible at all, but if we had this to say 0.2 or 3, it's far too much. So what we need to do is animate this. So let's go to around where it starts to move and hit I to add a keyframe in dispersion. And then move a few frames ahead. Well, let's say to... This here should be fine. And then let's increase this to 0.6 and then I to add a keyframe. And if we give that a render, and let it catch up. Give it a second. And there we go. So the dispersions, um, it, it's been animated so it'll increase, it'll get more and more as, as it picks up speed, which is exactly what we want. So now if we shift A, add a colour, new saturation value. And what we want to do is get rid of that colour there, so we just decrease the saturation. And now we can put in our own colour. So you can choose whatever colour you want. Um, since blue is a big theme in the Star Wars universe, I think we should just add some blue to it. And again, you can do that however you want. I'm just going to add a Shift A, add our RGB curves. Just increase the blue values here. You don't need to worry about this as much right now. You just want to add some basic colors to it. Okay, so we want to add some more stars to the middle of the screen. So to do that, we're going to go to the back to the magnetic field, this force field here. 
change it to the physics panel and we just want to increase this to say 0.3 now if we jump back to the beginning and Alt A to view this we see it pulls more into the middle which is what we want because in part 2 we're going to be creating a tunnel which will yeah we want to merge them both together so let's just give this a re-render and see how that looks So when you're happy with how it looks, you just want to render this out. I'm going to render this out as a movie file. And um, we don't need to worry about the encoding since there's no audio. Let's increase the samples to say 500 and give that a render. So yeah, when you're happy with the render, make sure you render out as an animation. You can do it as an image sequence or a movie file, that's up to you. You can also change the fall off type here for the, um, the motion blur. Tweak a few settings if you want. So once this is rendered out, you can then move on to part two, where we'll be creating the, the tunnel part.